This week in game news, the bat controversy continues. Some well-loved games have been updated, and as per usual, some awesome new games have been released. This is the Black Man and Robin game news update. To start with, the Boston Festival of Indie Games announced that there have been over 200 submissions for their 2015 showcase. This event is being held on Saturday, September 12, 2015, and the Boston Fig will be showing off all sorts of games, both video games and tabletop games. Unlike PAX or Comic-Con, the Boston Festival of Indie Games is not a massive industry event. It's a much smaller and more intimate affair. It's more along the lines of something like Indiecade, and it takes place at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. You can find out more at bostonfig.com. Are you a PC gamer who loves JRPGs? Great news. Tales of Symphonia is coming to Steam. This critically acclaimed game in the Tales series is, according to its Steam page, an epic battle for survival in a dying world, and there's a chosen one and etc etc etc. It's a very lackluster way of describing a game with a very fun, very exciting story. I confess, it's been some while since I've last played the game. I own the GameCube version of Tales of Symphonia, and I enjoyed the little bit of the game that I have thus far played, though looking at the Steam page, I am a little bit disappointed that it only mentions single player. The GameCube version of the game does boast multiplayer, and while it was a little bit awkward to use, it was a nice extra feature. Tales of Symphonia on PC is set to come out sometime in 2016. <laughs> やめたらそこで終わりだろう。誰だってみんなこの世界で生きてこの景色を見る権利があるんだ。お守り。フラノール僕らはマルタのためにも世界のためにも ロイドのことも信じたいの。Regarding updates, Cities Skylines was updated to version 1.1.b. This update brought in 30 brand new buildings and fixed several glitches within the game. In case you're not familiar with it, Cities Skylines is a fantastic city building game, developed by Colossal Order and published by Paradox. I've been playing plenty of it lately, and I really love it. I love it so much, in fact, that I'm going to be doing an episode of the Black Man and Robin Irregular Game Show on it. I love it so much, in fact, that this episode of the show is going to feature a sort of giveaway, though I'm not going to say what exactly it is for, or how you can enter quite yet. Still, keep an eye on Black Man and Robin as details are forthcoming. Some updates came to the dinosaur-taming game Ark Survival Evolved this week, 
that brought in the Pleosaurus and Ichthyosaurus, two aquatic dinosaurs that you can try and tame if you're brave enough. Additionally, the game was released on Mac and Linux. Ark Survival Evolved is currently in early access, and it is a good example of early access done right. Right now, the developers are working very hard on optimizing the game for all sorts of systems, bringing in new content regularly, and, in general, they've had a close ear to the community. You might want to check out Ark Survival Evolved if you're a fan of multiplayer survival games. An update hit Nintendo's squid-based shooter, Splatoon, on Tuesday. This free update brought a brand new mode called Tower Control. In the Tower Control mode, you hop aboard a tower in the middle of the map and ride it over to your opponent's goal. Now, in case you've not been keeping up, Nintendo has done a fantastic job at keeping Splatoon regularly updated with fresh content. New maps, game modes, and more have been added regularly and will continue to be added to the game for the foreseeable future. When the bombs fall, most shelters will provide minimal protection against the horrors of nuclear war. Last month, right after their E3 conference, Bethesda announced Fallout Shelter for iOS, a free-to-play base building game that seemed great success. The game is available for people with iDevices, and while we're not currently sure of when exactly it's coming to Android, Pete Hines, who you may remember from Bethesda's conference, revealed on Twitter that the Android version of the game should be out by next month. Fallout Shelter has thus far been a critical and commercial success. Even though it's a free-to-play mobile game, it's been designed not to be exploitative, but to be fun first. As a result of this, tons of people are playing the game and really love it, and it's made Bethesda money. If you'd like to learn more about how to make a free-to-play game that doesn't suck the life out of its users, you might want to check out the episode of the Black Man and Robin regular game show titled The Five Commands of Free-to-Play Games. Yes, I'm absolutely obligated to say it like that. In sad news, development has ceased on Mojang Scrolls. This fantastic digital card game saw a full release a couple of months ago. After the big Echoes update that hit a few weeks ago, however, Mojang has made the decision not to add any new content or features, but they will continue to work the meta. They've promised that the game's servers will continue running until July 1st, 2016, and that future proceeds will go towards keeping scrolls playable for as long as possible. Why is this happening? According to the blog post, the game has reached a point where it can no longer sustain continuous development. Essentially, Microsoft, the company that now owns Mojang, likely decided that Scrolls was not worth supporting, in spite of the fact that Scrolls wasn't advertised or promoted in any capacity. This is the sort of thing that I worried about when I heard that Microsoft was buying Mojang. It seems that they really bought the company for the sake of having a Minecraft factory, perhaps expecting every game from Mojang to be a runaway success without any real marketing behind it. Personally, I'm saddened by this. I'm a huge fan of Scrolls, and I didn't think I could care about any sort of card game until I began to play Scrolls. It really opened me up to a new genre. It's a real pity, but it looks like Microsoft bought Mojang and decided to throw their artistic integrity out of the window in favor of profits. Hopefully they don't do something stupid in the future like a free-to-play microtransaction Minecraft MMO. For the time being, I'm just going to keep enjoying Scrolls until it shuts down. The Bat Controversy Continues According to an anonymous QA tester speaking to Kotaku, the PC version of Arkham Knight has been like this for months, and all the problems we see now were the same, unchanged, almost a year ago. In case you missed the controversy, the PC version of Batman Arkham Knight was released last month and had a whole host of problems. The game wouldn't run in 60 FPS, as advertised, and it suffered numerous glitches. The problems with the game are so bad that Warner Brothers pulled the game from Steam and it is still unavailable to purchase to this day. Stick with us for updates on this ongoing controversy. During the currently ongoing Anime Expo, Zero Escape 3 was announced for the 3DS. The sequel to the critically acclaimed Zero Escape Virtue's Last Reward, Zero Escape 3 is set to come out sometime in 2016 in North America. We don't have any gameplay footage, but we do have this bit of footage from the Anime Expo courtesy of Nintendo Everything. We thank them for the footage, and we encourage you to go check out at Nin Everything on Twitter. 
Set to be released on July 7, 2015, Rocket League will be free for PlayStation Plus members. The successor to 2008's Supersonic Acrobatic Rocket Powered Battle Cars, or SARP BC, which sounds like a paramilitary organization, Rocket League is a game that's a lot like football, but, well, it's not exactly. It features rocket powered cars zipping around an arena trying to shoot a soccer ball, or football depending on where you're watching this, into a goal. In addition to being released on the PlayStation 4, Rocket League is also coming to PC on July 7. If you're a PlayStation Plus member, you'll also be getting the following games for free. Check it out. Sticks is all about infiltration and assassination. I mean, he's a 200-year-old goblin, so he has a lot of experience with this sort of thing. Put it to good use. Next up, Mousecraft, which is also available on PS3 and PS Vita. Help a bunch of mice get to the cheese by stacking together different block types and solving puzzles. This game may or may not feature a crazy cat scientist, so I am totally on board. Now put your hands together for Entwined, which is also available on PS3 and PS Vita. Guide two souls embodied in a bird and a fish through nine lifetimes of experience. It's a surreal and beautiful journey to bring these two together, because when two people fall in love, they turn into a dragon. Changing gears, we have a free PS3 game for you in the form of Rain. This beautiful, heart-aching adventure follows a ghostly young boy following an invisible girl through town. Unique mechanics and a melancholic story make this one a very special treat. And lastly, feast your eyes on this PS Vita game for the month, Geometry Wars 3 Dimensions Evolve. This series was a defining milestone for the shooter genre, and Dimensions Evolve brings that high-intensity gameplay all the way to PS Vita. With dozens of new levels, this shooter will keep you challenged for a good long while. As always, Plus members get free games alongside other benefits, including exclusive discounts on PlayStation Store, online game saves, automatic game updates, and online multiplayer on PS4. These games hit PS Plus on the first Tuesday of the month, but keep your eyes on PlayStation Blog to see the other benefits PS Plus has to offer. Hey guys, here she is. The PlayStation Nintendo Super Disc. In other PlayStation news, a prototype of the original PlayStation, the one that was designed by Sony in conjunction with Nintendo, has surfaced. It looks like a CD drive from an old PC got loose and shoved itself inside an NES. Shared by Analog Boy of Reddit, the console comes with a CD and cartridge, though it's unknown what's on either. According to Diebold, his father, who used to work for a former Sony executive, held onto the console after his boss was getting rid of it. The prototype units from those delicate days when the SNES was to be expanded with CD-ROMs have all been, on the record, destroyed. Apparently, however, we have a survivor. As of yet, the system hasn't been plugged in. That said, Diebold promises to keep us updated on the console and his exploits with it. On the bottom here, all we have is this extension port. And uh, this sticker, a Z or a 2, I don't know. Looks like there's a couple bolts here, but I'm not really trying to start taking it apart either. Um, let's put this down. Here's the controller, Sony PlayStation, but what's this? Oh, Nintendo. Looks like a Super Nintendo controller, but not really sure. I haven't played one in forever, so... Uh... V.Next, a game that I've had my eye on for a while, has just hit Kickstarter. Set in a dark, futuristic version of Seattle, the game will be released over 18 weeks. V.Next, you see, is an episodic game. In V.Next, you play as a woman named Vivian Denue. You're a hacker who's been captured by the police and forced to work at an electronics factory, but your memory's been erased. Apparently, in the future, that's how they punish people. Your goal in the game is to relearn your hacker skills and to figure out who you were and why you were punished. Personally, I'm pretty excited for V-Next. I'm a sucker for all things cyberpunk, and the story sounds pretty intriguing. I also like the idea of the game being released in an episodic manner. Usually, though, episodic games are released over the course of months. V-Next, however, is looking to do this week by week.
I'm curious as to the sort of community that will spring up around playing the next. Will it more closely resemble a community of television watchers than of ordinary game players? Time, I suppose, will tell. V.Next is set to come out in March of 2016 for Mac and PC. We want players to use technology as their tool to solve problems and push the story forward in a futuristic Seattle. Seattle is a technology town. Two of the top software companies in the world were founded here, and it's a city that's currently undergoing a crazy expansion. Seattle is racing towards this unknowable future, and it's the perfect setting for VNext. VNext is the story of Vivian Deneu, a famous hacker who was caught, convicted, and had her memory erased. When we meet Vivian, she's starting over from ground zero, and like many of us, she's not really sure what she's capable of. Vivian, together with hardware supplier Serafina Jackson, and a rogue mercenary known as The Factor, take our players on an amazing journey through greed and corruption, manipulation and collusion, advancement and virtue, and players are going to love going on this adventure. We're launching our Kickstarter now so that we can include our players in the process and passion that we know exists for this new style of gameplay. The funds that we raise will allow us to accelerate development as well as include additional features in the game. By having these extra resources, we can deliver the highest quality experience as well as be true to our vision of delivering half a year of weekly episodes for VNext. We've already assembled an amazing team of musicians, artists, writers, and visionaries. As the founder of Sync Build Run, I'm using my experience from having already shipped over two dozen games on various platforms and from building and leading teams at Amazon and other tech companies. It's my job to ensure that we deliver a super compelling story, incredible gameplay, and meet a high quality bar so that players love coming back week over week. We know that players are going to enjoy discovering what surprises we have in store for them as they drive the story forward with their decision and actions. Join us. Once you've upgraded yourself as a backer, we know you're going to be blown away by what we deliver next. An interesting teaser trailer has just been released for a game called Void and Meddler. It's a cyberpunk game about a woman named Finn who has spent the last two years wandering without any memories. She hits the streets to hunt for her humanity in a cosmopolitan cyberpunk city. Are episodic cyberpunk games the flavor of the week? It seems that way because Void and Meddler is going to be episodic. It's coming to Mac and PC October of 2015. The first episode is coming out in October. There is no word on when the other two episodes are set to be released. Because this week just seems to be Cyberpunk Week here at Black Man and Robin, we decided that it's time for a Cyberpunk giveaway. This time, we're giving away the game Bionic Views. It's a really cool Cyberpunk strategy game by Arkin. For full details on how to enter, just head to blackmanandrobin.com right now. The developers of the critically acclaimed fighting game Skullgirls have just announced Indivisible, a Metroidvania ARPG starring a girl named Aizna. Aizna has mysterious powers, and the game tells the story of her journey as she sets out to discover the truth behind her abilities. The game story draws inspiration from various mythologies, though the developers cite Southeast Asian mythology as a particularly strong influence. Additionally, the game will feature the same 2D hand-drawn art that Lab Zero is known for, as well as a soundtrack by Hiroki Kikuta of Secret of Mana fame. Finally, we have a new trailer for the upcoming Horizon Zero Dawn. It's honestly really just the E3 2015 trailer, however this one has a lot more information about the game thanks to Mark Norris, senior producer at Guerrilla Games. Take a look. So you had lots of blues, lots of greens inside of that uh, sort of open world environment and we've actually tried to keep as much of the game in the open world as possible. You kind of see some long necks walking around back there, there's some rivers kind of flowing around and there's even an ancient city that you can kind of see a little bit in terms of the background. All of those places you will visit and with the modified kill zone engine that we're using, uh, you're going to be able to visit it all without loading. So it's a completely seamless open world. Sorry, little one. I 
there may be a little bit of a kindred spirit between the machines and Aloy, and that's a big story element that we won't get into today. But yeah, you could probably guess that she's not this indiscriminate hunter that just wants to go around and kill things. She only does so with a purpose. Almost at first glance, you take a look at that bow and you might think, wait, that's just a regular composite bow. But then you take a closer look and you actually notice that it's a mixture. It's a mixture of elements. First, it's a mixture of elements found in the naturally occurring environment, but it's also mixed with machine parts. So machine parts are the key to Horizon Zero Dawn. They're the base of the economy and you're gonna want them because Aloy is the master craftswoman. Here we go! The different weapons that are involved in the screen there, you can actually, you're taking a look at that wheel. There are four slots on the wheel for weapons, and then each slot for a weapon also has up to three slots for that ammo. Not, not all weapons have three ammo types, but there are more than four weapons in the game that you can equip, and many of the different weapons actually have more than three ammo types. So it's actually a very strategic and tactical choice, and allows for a lot of character customization in terms of what exactly you want to equip and when. One of the things that makes Aloy incredibly unique is that she has this ability to understand the machines. That there was this incredibly strong weak point in the middle of the machine, it's actually called the power core. It was protected, of course, by heavy armor plates. There are actually 93 of those destructible armor plates across the entirety of the Thunderjaw. Now, what Aloy decides to do is to use its own weapons against it. She knew she could take off with an armor piercing arrow, she could take off that disc launcher. So she stunned it with the electric arrows. Then she took off the disc launcher. She used the disc launcher to remove that armor plating. Then she used one of the incredibly scarce but very effective explosive arrows to hit that exact spot and take the thunder jaw down. Uh, of course, we've talked a number of times so far about a perk system or a skill tree, and so there are a large number of elements there. You do get XP from doing quests, you get XP from killing the machines, uh, you get XP from discovering locations in the world. It's a fully-fledged RPG. Well, that's it for this week's Game News. Be sure to follow at Blackman and Robin on Twitter for all the latest game news, reviews, previews, and interviews. Follow me at Jordan underscore Cameron for my other views. Don't forget to take a look at the next episode of the Black Man and Robin Irregular Game Show. Besides talking about city skylines, we'll also be giving away something very, very cool. <laughs>